have you made or lost money in NFTs? According to this poll, most of you have actually lost money in NFTs and by an overwhelming amount. This was the interesting question I got asked the other day and it got me thinking. I wonder if more people have made or lost money in the NFT space so far. Now, obviously there are whales who have made a fortune in NFTs, but those are generally outliers. What have most people who have traded an NFT felt about the experience? Did they lose money and leave and give up? Or are they up a good amount like me and most of my alpha group? That was a shameless plug. Click the card if you wanna join our group. Trust me, it'll be worth it. I'm sure there are at least some of you watching this video that may not have been as fortunate at making money in the space. And as someone who has found success trading NFTs, I wanted to share my thoughts with you on the mistakes that I've made and things I wish I knew when I started with NFTs. Some of these tips may not seem crazy, but I assure you that these are things you'll want to approach with a look before you leap mentality. In other words, chill out your DJM behavior for just a second and listen to what I'm saying because it could end up saving you a lot of money. The first tip you may have heard before, Gary Vee has preached it more than once, and that is that 98% of projects are going to zero at some point. That means two out of every 100 projects that you look at are probably going to die in the near future. And given how fast the NFT space moves, it's likely that many of those 100 will die within the first year, or maybe even sooner. To illustrate this point, let's look at some projects that I bought into when I first started, which was about eight months ago. The first one here is Crypto Gem Alliance. You can see the floor price is currently 0.001 ETH which is literally worth $10. And some of these are even selling for zero. Yes, actually zero. The number zero. People are trading them for zero. Not to mention that there are only six sales in the entire last month. So it's worthless and it's also mostly a liquid, meaning that nobody is buying it. And if they are buying it, then they are paying no more than $10 for one of these gems. For some context here, they were minting for about $300 each. I actually bought one of these and sold it for $1,500 about one month after I paid for it. So I got the better end of that bargain by selling early. But if you held till now, you basically just wasted $3,000 because congratulations, you've rode your first NFT to zero. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. Second project here I wanna look at is called Omnimorphs. And this one had some pretty good buzz when I bought it. At the moment, there are about two to 10 sales per day priced at about $100 each. I bought two of these for $1,000 each and sold both of them at about a 90% loss. And as you can see, this project is all but dead now as well. The third project here is called Universe in a Cube. And over the last month, there have been four sales for $0 each, literally zero. Super fuzz. Four sales in the last month, all selling for about $100 or so. I bought mine for $2,000 and again, sold it at a 90% loss right before this project pretty much died fully. Pug Friends, floor price, 0.01, .01 aka $30. Dogs Unchained, floor price, 0.01, .01 aka $30. The list goes on and on and on, but you get the point. A lot of the products that I invested in died. Now notice how all these collections are actually verified OpenSea collections. Some of the bigger products coming out today aren't even verified. And this goes to show you that the decently sized projects from the last six to eight months have all peaked and gone to zero in basically half of a year. This is going to continue to happen to the majority of projects, no matter how much hype or promise they have, it's important to choose your project investments wisely. And that leads me to my next tip of advice. Tip number two, Access to information is critical to success in NFTs. How do you know which projects are worth looking into and have a better chance to avoid the fate of going to zero? Well, the two biggest sources of early valuable information are one, alpha groups, and two, NFT tools. Alpha groups are simply groups of NFT investors that band together to share critical information, resources, and relationships to help the whole group have advantages in the NFT space. My alpha group, for example, does this, and we also offer whitelist spots so that members can get pre-sale access to top new NFT projects. But at the core, alpha groups really just provide access to information. Knowing about hot new projects before the majority of the space does is key to success in getting in early. And getting in early allows you to secure things like pre-sale access through a whitelist spot, which makes it easier to buy at prices that are lower or prices that are cheaper before projects pump. Now the second avenue here is having some sort of toolkit, which is also pretty critical. 
tools like NFT HUD, NFT Nerds, IC Tools, Nansen.ai, all of these gives you detailed insight, analytics, and features that other users simply don't have by using just OpenSea Twitter and Discord. For example, I can use the NFT HUD trending dashboard to see which products are hot right now, which direction they're trending, real-time sales, listings, price walls, and all different things to help me make short-term flips on almost any collection that I want to. The abundance of information that is organized and laid out here is seriously paramount to day trading or short-term flips for NFTs. So if you're new to the space, I highly recommend checking out either an alpha group or buying a subscription to a toolkit or both ideally. And it just so happens that I offer both of those services. So if you trust me and want to take part in what I've built, you can check those links out in the description below. With all that being said though, timing your entry into a project and deciding which projects to mint with your precious capital is just one half of the equation. You also have to know when to sell those NFTs to maximize your profit. Like I said earlier, I've lost 90% of my investment on some of these earlier projects that I thought could do well. And in fact, I would have lost all 100% of my investment if I didn't come to terms and realize to get out before they fully went to zero. Since making all of those mistakes that I highlighted, I have yet to lose any considerable amount of money on an NFT that I've minted or bought on secondary. And that's just because I've gotten better at how to navigate the space. But I'm not perfect by any means. And I've realized that there is a negative stigma around people selling their NFTs. So here's what I have to say about that. And this is tip number three. Nobody ever went broke by taking profits. Think about it. Even if you bought a Bored Ape at Mint for minimal, like $100, and you sold it at 10 ETH because you were up almost 100x on that investment. No matter what, if you sell, you've made a ton of money. Now, in hindsight, you may regret it because apes are currently sitting over a 100 ETH floor, which would be pretty much guaranteed life-changing money for almost anyone. But remember, Profit is profit. If you go for a moonshot on every single NFT you buy, you will likely lose money on most of those investments, right? 98% are going to zero at some point. So if you buy and hold 100 NFTs, there's usually going to be a pretty strong chance that most of your holds will lose most of their value over time. For example, if I buy an Azuki and they're currently around a 25 ETH floor and it goes to 100 ETH floor, that's amazing, and I made a bunch of money, but now I have to decide if I want to hold it or sell it. And at that point, if Azuki goes back down to 5 ETH and I need the money, I just sold at a massive loss. Or even worse, if it goes to zero, I just lost my entire investment. But what if I bought two Azukis at my 25 ETH entry price, and they go to 100 ETH? Well, now I can easily sell one of them with confidence because my sale will cover the cost of both my purchases and net me about 50 Ethereum in profit. Then I can comfortably hold my other Azuki as long as I want. If it goes to the moon, I win. If it goes to zero, I still already won because I've made a ton of profit by selling my first Azuki. That right there is the benefit of buying multiple collections that you really believe in. Overall, the lesson here is don't be afraid to take profits. You cannot lose over time if you consistently cash in your profits while you are up. Greed is nasty, so if you want those moonshots, I highly recommend buying two NFTs or even more to take your moonshots with. That way you can cover your cost basis, potentially make some profit, and hold onto those other NFTs and hope for that absolute Grand Slam moonshot. And I know what you're thinking. You may say, Matt, 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 Matt. How can I buy two Azukis when I can't even afford one in the first place? Well, I have the same question because I personally cannot afford Azuki either. And this leads me right into my next tip. If you wanna make a lot of money, the truth is you have to start with a lot of money. You aren't going to invest $100 into NFTs and make millions in the first few months. Unless you somehow identify the next board ape and time everything with absolute perfection, it's just not going to happen. I would say starting off with $1,000 and navigating the space with precision and a bit of good luck, you'll have a pretty decent shot to make some serious money in the first six months of your NFT journey. But more likely than not, you'll hit some losers early and it will be much harder to exponentially grow your starting capital. For me personally, I've made about 13 Ethereum total so far in my eight months in NFTs. And that's pretty good. But think about it this way. If I had 30 Ethereum to invest from day one in my NFT journey, I buy a board ape and I hold it till now, I would be up about 70 Ethereum as opposed to the 13 Ethereum that I'm currently up. 
And the difference is, I grinded my butt off in the last eight months to make that 13 Ethereum. Day in and day out, timing trades, being updated with market research. But if I had bought the board ape with 30 ETH and held it and done absolutely nothing that entire time, I would have been up a lot more money. And that just goes back to the whole tip. Having money to work with means you can take bigger bets and yield bigger rewards faster. My goal was to start small, learn the space, then take some medium sized risks, which for me was about $5,000 and consistently stack small wins. 0.1 ETH here, 0.5 ETH there and so on. I've had a lot of winners and a few big losers, but my overall strategy is working and I'm now able to take on some bigger investments like 20 to 30K purchases in hopes that we can continue to grow the portfolio. This brings me to my final point of this video. Ultimately, everybody has the same goal, make money. You are more or less competing against everyone else in the space at all times to try to make that money. At the end of the day, the common denominator of most NFT investors is to stack Ethereum. You do that by buying low and selling high. And this sounds quite obvious, but I think many people get caught up in the day to day and lose sight of the overall picture. What happens when everyone is trying to flip the same projects at the same time? That's how market demand dies out. NFT investors that have been in the space for a while have way more experience, information and access than a newcomer. So keep in mind that the big players in the space will often dump their bags for profit on the newbies. This sounds harsh, but this is how it works in new technology. It's not perfect and people are always gonna be looking for financial gain to some degree. These are points we have to be aware of when we're actively trading in the space. Keep an eye on what the trends are, what the whales are buying and what they're selling, what the content creators are talking about, like myself, what the alpha groups are shilling, and know that ultimately everyone's intentions boil down to one thing, and that's making money and making a living. I hope you found these tips useful. If you want to learn more, get information faster, or just chat with me in general, I highly recommend you check out my private alpha group where you can get up to speed on everything in the NFT space. And all you have to do is click this card right up here or link down below to go and check out all about that. Have a great day and we'll see you guys next time. Take care.